When we come back, we'll do the news. Gilbert Gottfried, the famous comedian, yeah. who now is the star the, the of... The parrot. The parrot and star <laughs> of Hollywood Squares. <laughs> but he behaves on Hollywood Squares. He's so nice. Yeah. You want to bring Gilbert in now? Even though we got to take a break, let him introduce himself. Okay. All right, go ahead. He's so nice on that show. He's trying to be a part of the group. So he's probably got to save up. Gilbert's a parrot on some cartoon. But he's just on Hollywood Squares, and he's like... He even dresses nicer. Look at yeah, that. Now he's dressing like a Hollywood Square. I think he has a fashion consultant. <laughs> new haircut. A new hairstyle. <laughs> oh, it's all different. And you know what? We give Gilbert... You know, we don't have any food here and stuff. So yeah. We give him water because it's free. Yeah. He has two, he has two, <laughs> two bottles. bottles of water. Yeah, three bottles. Anything that's free. I'm turning the water... I'm turning the bottles in for the five-cent deposit after. Gilbert comes here like a camel, drinks for like... And then that him for two months <laughs> until he comes back. Drink anymore. <laughs> like, and give me water. Yeah. Uh, you're on Hollywood Squares. How often are you? I, I, I see you on all the time. Yeah. Yeah. What is going on? They must love you. You there. must be very I, popular. I guess. I'm the new Paul Lynn. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. really becoming a regular. Are you now a regular? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're an animal. <laughs> you, I, well, you like also like me. I used to think he was like straight, but he just acted crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. As a child, I just thought he was a wacky guy. But don't go by me. I thought Liberace was Oh, yeah. yeah. I really believe. No. I would never. That's I did. how I knew there was something going on. No, there. I was a kid, and like he'd come out in a gown and jewels and a cape, and I'd go to my mom. And Mike Douglas, I used to watch the Mike Douglas yeah. show all the time. And Mike Douglas would say, you know, Lee, Lee, he called him. Yeah. Lee, you're such a great guy. You're such <laughs> a great catch. When will you? And I don't think Mike Douglas realized. Just, the biggest mystery to me was how you got Lee out of Liberace. Yeah, but they, and then, and when, well, Lee, when are you going to get married? You have so much to give a woman. Well, Mike, <laughs> I have not, uh, you know, with my touring schedule. The guy's 50 years old. He's an old queen. He's like, and his eyes are pulled up to his forehead. Yeah, and I'm like, I idiot. get so many women out on the road. It's oh, hard to so settle lovely. down. Yeah, you know, till you meet the right one. <laughs> you know. But I want to try all of them. <laughs> He's a womanizer. Yes. Do you think Ricky Martin is waiting for the right woman? <laughs> oh. We are... Are you dancing the Vita Loca? <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> now, you know, does your sister dance the Vita Loca? <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> you, you, you know, Mike, yeah. um, I, I'm on the road 365 days a year, and you meet so many great ladies, but uh, it's hard to meet the right one. Why, with all those women, I can't keep it in my pants. <laughs> My sequins are all stained. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I, love I all get of that. so much cloaking. <laughs> <laughs> what about just white women or black? Oh, doesn't matter. I'll bang the colored ones also. <laughs> Sometimes those colored chambermaids come in. <laughs> Is that right? Those big fat colored chambermaids. <laughs> They're the ones that turn me on. Those real Aunt Jemima looking ones. <laughs> Those big fat 300 pound Aunt Jemimas. They'll come in with their big black butts. That's what turns me on. And their big troopy breasts. That's what I like. Please. I like when they don't have any teeth either. Those nice. 90-year-old, 300-pound black chambermaid. That's what you can't get married. <laughs> Those colored chambermaids. When they come in, they're the ones that turn me on. So, Lee, you'll never get married, or you're going you're gonna to get married one day? Yeah, when the right kluge comes along. Oh. Right. What, about that, what about that guy you hang around with, Boober? The, the, <laughs> that looks very odd. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's just my accountant. <laughs> oh, Boober. Yes. He's my accountant. He likes to dress in tight clothes just because it helps him move around quicker while he's doing my books. But you just give me those 500-pound color chambermaid. That's what I want, Mike. All right, so Gilbert is here. <sighs> Della Reese is my is idea Gilbert for woman. Here? Right, so you're the new Paul Lind on Hollywood Square. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's here to say. I, I once heard, I think David Brenner said it, that uh, I'm not sure where I... It was that Paul Lynn, not only being an old queen and an alcoholic... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> 
<laughs> well, he said he answered. Yeah, right, go ahead. Yes, that he was also like viciously anti-Semitic. Oh, no. <laughs> and true. he would get drunk during lunch hour, yeah. and he'd go, "Oh, those miserable Jews." <laughs> <laughs> you know the reason I don't have a career now? Stinking Jews in Hollywood. Those money-hungry Jews, they don't care about quality. So, so, he was, he was, so he was an old queen who was... Just what did he think he could do with it? <laughs> an anti-Semitic old queen. Oh, you know, all, the, all the drunken homos blame the Jews. Which rules did he miss? Did he pass him over? I could have been in gone with the wind. Those no good kikes held me back. Sounds like Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> the kikes! Uh, Stinking kites! Yeah. <laughs> Those blood sucking Jews! <laughs> They're why I can't sell my tape! <laughs> you know your uh, <laughs> you know your comedy is so full of anger. Have you ever been in psychotherapy? <laughs> Have you ever well, indulged? In... Money. Oh, that's right. <laughs> What if we get you free psychotherapy? Did you go? You won. And you've, you've changed your hairstyle. It is now oh, like, yes. a, like Mo from Three Seasons. <laughs> sort of a Caesar. Are you someone thing. advising you on, on uh, no, your no, look? Because you I look guess... fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, oh, you. You. you know, you're like Julius Godfrey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you straightening your hair? Because it used to be much curlier. Well, no, no. Now that it's shorter. It just lays flat yes, like yes. that. Wow. Just paste it to your head. <laughs> this is really like an interview at entertainment tonight. Yeah, is that a free haircut? Yeah. Or? Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> right. <laughs> You look like a, like a, a George Clooney. Yes. With that hair. It's sort of like he said it was a free haircut, so he just had him cut it down because then he won't need a haircut for him. But it must be nice when you run and work out in the gym. Oh, of it's course. easy to maintain. <laughs> when I bench press. Right. Yeah, I don't get my hair He's sweaty. a swimmer now. That's... You know, you're starting to look like Joe Piscopo. Oh, God. <laughs> very buff. Very buff. You're very dangerously too close to Joe Piscopo. Wait, you know, uh, you know, Howard. <laughs> just, just, yeah, I'm just a regular Jersey. Kind of guy, you know. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> You're not kidding. You haven't left the house. In, in so, uh, all right. I want it when we come back. I want to ask you about Hollywood Squares. I want to ask what goes on behind the scenes. I and really how want did to... you become a writer? Yeah, I mean, oh, yes. this is a fascinating yes. story. Yes. Fascinating, fascinating Hollywood success the story. Real story yeah. behind it. Way to go! Forty years in the business, and now you're Hollywood Squares. Get the shot. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on all your success. All right. Gilbert's here, and then Gilbert will uh, sit with us for the news. He loves to comment on world events. Yes. And uh, he's thought about it a long time. Yeah. He's got a lot to say. I think this will be the first time he heard about Kosovo. <laughs> I know. We'll be back right after these words. Let's take a peek at the other side as Howard channels King Elvis. I love Cajun food. Well, what was your favorite kind of food? In I like all my food blackened. Yeah. The same way that bitch Priscilla like her men. Uh, she doesn't take off with a Negro karate instructor. You know, I heard he wasn't a Negro, Elvis. Well, he looked like a Negro to me. <laughs> and I'm as dumb as the lump of the flesh on the back of my mama's neck. So I think he would Negro, so he'd Negro. Okay. And don't kill the bit. <laughs> you know, talking about that lump on the back of my mama's neck, I used yep. to... My mama Mama, her name was Gladys, you know. Yeah. And I used to stroke the lumpy flesh on the back of my mama's neck. Oh. You know, I once drew a happy face on her lumpy boil. No. Yeah, a little happy face, and I would rub it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, you see your mother up there now. You're reunited with her. Her name Gladys, my mama. Yes. And we, your dad was Vernon. Yeah, but we had a nickname for my mama. What was that? We called her Pig. No. Easy to see why he was hero to zillions. Now, let's all hail the new king, Howard Stern. Eight, two, three. K-Rock. K-Rock. The Howard Stern Show. Hi, Mark Harris here. You know, the husband of the late Martha Ray. I just want you all to know that I support Casey Armstrong in his quest to grow a stylish beard. Of course, stylish. I love style. You go, Casey. Don't listen to these negative people on the Howard Stern Show. Right, go, right. go, go, go. Your facial hairs is yours. Do what you want to be grown in any way that you want, including whatever you desire. I get rid of this. Okay about your beard, Casey. All right. Can we get rid of that one? By the way, Casey. Shave. Actually, you're young when I was your age. Absolutely devoid of talent. And now, here's the only guy I didn't sleep with, Howard Stern. 
cut that one down to just say, and now here's the only guy I never slept with, Howard Stern. Cut out everything about Casey's beard. Because that guy's a talent vacuum. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried is here. He must be promoting something. Oh, see Gilbert Gottfried tomorrow night at Caroline's Comedy Club. Boy, give us some advance notice. Is that the only one that you work at at Caroline's? I never see you working anywhere else. Is it, you I, like that? As far as New York, yeah. Right. You That's your place. You work at and Chuckles other places. Yeah. No, I've done those. <laughs> yeah. He'll do whatever. Uh -huh, he he's. Has your price gone <laughs> up, sir? Has your attendance gone up at these concerts since you started doing Hollywood Squares? Um. No. Hmm. I guess. Really? I don't know. I, I mean, get recognized Gilbert more from Hollywood Squares. goes on stage with his eyes closed, so he doesn't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, that is unusual. <laughs> Uh, it's Mark Kikeson. <laughs> Stinking miserable Kikes. <laughs> Hitler had the right idea. <laughs> Should have wiped them all out. You know, maybe I ought to set up that premise again. People might just be too. Oh, yes. Well, yes, uh, Gilbert was saying that he had heard that Paul Lynn, in addition to being homosexual and an and alcoholic, an alcoholic yes. that he perhaps was very anti Semitic. <laughs> That's right. No good stinking juice. For tickets, call 212-757-4100. be funny to hear a drunken old queen mouth off about the Jews. <laughs> that and is so stinking. It's so ironic because here's a gay man who was probably the victim of discrimination, and yet he would discriminate against the Jews, right? None of those Jewish fags would have sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get in with the Velvet Mafia, huh? So, Gilbert, tell me uh, a little something before we start the news real quick here. Yeah, because, you know, people can't take too much of you. Uh, <laughs> Gilbert and small children. Is that what people are saying? Will you ever do an anti-Semitic uh, parrot on your uh, cartoon show? Oh, yes. You will. Uh, yeah. Well, a big hook beak. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. Gilbert, uh, so so when you got, when did you get the call for Hollywood Squares first? I mean, because it seems to me that you did it once and you were such a big hit. Now, did you call them or did they? Call did you oh, beg no, them? They, to... I think they called me. They called yeah. you. Yeah. That's unusual. Yeah, I know. And who calls you? Whoopi Goldberg or someone else? Uh, no, whoever their producers are. And I guess Whoopi Goldberg, that is, is her show. Suggested? Yes. Yeah, she's in charge. So she must have been the one who thinks you're funny and wants you on and on and on and on again a million times, right? I hope so. Right. Or do they run the names by her and she just didn't object to you? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah like the one that's the least object. <laughs> and I know you do an offensive kingfish type of uh, voice. Do you ever... Do it on the... Yeah, well, just... hello there. Hello, Dal. <laughs> what bad? You just said that on Hollywood Square. Yeah, I just found myself a Geigo counter. <laughs> we is going to be rich. Did Whoopi say to you, don't do that voice? It's offensive to me. No, it just it's never come up. You haven't used that yeah. impression yet. Yeah. <laughs> you, you play it a little safer on there. You have to know oh, your yes. audience as a comedian, and you know that that's more of a mainstream type television show, so you avoid black and Jewish humor. <laughs> After his last foray into... Nationwide television, I guess he learned his lesson. Yeah. He, he screwed up at the Emmys. Oh, with the masturbation. Yeah, the <laughs> masturbation material. Yes. <laughs> so, now, what happens? You tape all five shows for the week in one day. Is that yes, correct? Yes, And uh, from what I understand... <laughs> <laughs> and from what I understand, well, he's been on. How many? I mean, you've done a bunch. A I don't bunch. Know. You're yeah. on all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you and the the teenage witch seem to be uh, getting it off. What is no? Who is the woman that's on all the time? Oh, the witch. Caroline Ray. Yeah. Is she funny? Yeah. Well, she's the aunt of the teenage witch. Right. And yeah. and you and her seem to be regulars. Whoopi is yeah. obviously a regular. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Who are you on with last? The Baldwin brothers? Oh, the Baldwin it brothers? Seems that yeah. They're always on with the Baldwin brothers, Gilbert is. Mm. So you. <laughs> when is the last time you did the Hollywood Squares? Uh, a few weeks ago. And who was on with you? Yeah. Anybody? Is it fun meeting the famous people? <laughs> I know you're a fan. Do you get their autograph? Uh, the last time was this, this classic TV week. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm hmm. And how did you fit into that? I don't well, understand. Uh, I know. <laughs> you're not on any classic yeah. television. Yeah, I was getting kind of scared of doing that one. And they right. said, no, you're one of the regulars. Right. And and uh, I, I, when I did the Hollywood Squares, yeah. I did it a long time ago, before this incarnation. And I went on the Hollywood Squares, and they would give you the answers. Oh, yeah. They would give you funny answers. Yeah. So so I don't think I'm revealing anything they don't want you to know. Or well, maybe they don't they want you to know. Give you the it's real not like answer. a big quiz show scandal. Yeah, no, I yeah. think they do give you the real they answers. They give you the real answer? 
But they give you a fake answer. A yeah, bluff. They, they give you a fake answer. If if you wanted the real answer, you could find out how easy. And do you enjoy using the jokes that these writers uh, give you to say, <laughs> or you don't? You ignore them pretty much. Yeah, sometimes I ignore it. Sometimes I d depends if I have any energy that day. Right. Right, I see. Sometimes I don't even know what the joke is, and I'll read it off the page. Right. And Whoopi Goldberg want, run out of energy after like game three or yeah. something, and then yeah. you start using theirs. <laughs> you don't really care. Where after a while, if it sounds like a joke, right? And Whoopi Goldberg loves to talk and hear herself talk in her story. <laughs> and loves to go on and on and on. Do you so. get what she's saying? Because you would laugh. Yeah, <laughs> well, you have to. This is a good gig because they do they pay you more than the other people because you've now become a regular. regular? I don't. I don't know how much they're getting. But do you have a special contract with Hollywood Squares, or do you? Like have... you had the guest contract, and then did you get oh, a better oh, one? Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. kind of hired to be a regular, yeah. so you can't even badmouth Whoopi anymore. Yeah. <laughs> look at look if, how scared he is. If, of if I do, I'll be back on USA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you're you're in the square directly below Whoopi. Does she ever fart on you? Or <laughs> pass wind? Oh. No. Oh. I like when they have those guests who are afraid to say the joke altogether. Yeah, right. I like when the when the guests obviously because Whoopi has a weird move. Yeah. The, the guy will ask the question, Whoopi, when uh, people uh, say that they're for Klimt, what does that mean? And then Whoopi will go, Honey, I don't want to hear the answer to this because they really don't even have an answer, right? Yeah. Well, sometimes they'll get these people that are afraid to say the joke, so they'll go and who is. Uh, the first president of the United States, and they'll go, uh, uh, Ronald McDonald. No, 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 that's just a joke. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Nobody like you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Like they're just afraid you might, they might appear stupid. Right, right. Yeah. But just Whoopi will do things like he'll say, Whoopi, who was the silent mariner? I don't know who he was, but he's at my house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he's there throwing up. <laughs> And everybody goes, ooh. Ooh, sexually <laughs> crazy. Charged. Wow. So who's harder to be around, Ronda Shearer or Whoopi? <laughs> <laughs> you work with some weird people. Sounds like a die. Yeah. <laughs> it's an evil laugh. <laughs> and what happens, I know that when I was there, they take a break between shows, and then you can go into a green room and eat lunch, for example. Oh, yeah. And all the celebrities will, all the squares will go and eat lunch together. There's a big cafeteria. That's, right. that's where Paul Lynn would do his anti <laughs> <laughs> and, what, and what do you do? Do you, do you I sit there, get drunk, and go, stinking kites. <laughs> 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 They're the reason I can't get no face. So do you do you sit and talk to the other celebrities? Oh, lunch? sometimes. You who, do. Who do you yeah, depending on with? who they are. Do you sit with Whoopi? Who do you sit? Who's table sometimes do you sit with? I'll sit with Whoopi, sometimes... Right. Whoever. And what people brothers? maybe what people give yeah. you show business advice or or oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You sit with Coolio? Oh oh yeah. <laughs> Coolio hang. Yeah. Yeah, hey Coolio. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I'm gonna kill that white boy. I hate you. <laughs> you ain't funny. Yeah, no good white right, boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh that's exciting for you. And the lunch is free? Oh yes. Right. Okay. Oh and last time I was on the show there was some woman who crashed her car. Saying that she was listening to uh, the Stern show when I was doing Dracula. Right. Interviewing uh, OJ, asking black people if they thought OJ was guilty. Right. So, of course, they didn't put that on the show, did no, they? No, they didn't. They didn't. No. They cut that out. Uh, yeah. Right. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Somebody had something nice to say about us. Right, so we right. had to hit rid the, of it. The floor. Yeah. Hit the like, editor's floor. OJ Dragula, what's that? <laughs> Holy mackerel. Let's stick to the sexual yeah. double entendre. <laughs> He's right. at my house. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did you hear that Steven Spielberg adopted a black child? <laughs> did you know that? I think Gilbert is getting politically correct. Hey, yes. son. Uh, yes. Um, yes. 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 All right. Let's do some I... news. Gilbert Gottfried's here. Go see him at Caroline's. He's... Sometimes he's very funny. For <laughs> <laughs> a ticket more call, often more often than not, he'll be funny. <laughs> yes. You can catch him on a good yeah. night. Two one two seven five seven forty one hundred. Do you find that... Uh, that women now are more attracted to you because you're on Hollywood Squares? That's a big show. Oh, yeah. Do yeah. they recognize no, you more? Yes. <laughs> he has a girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You still with that girlfriend or are you mad? Cause didn't she call in the last time? Did Remember you that? get rid yeah. of her because you, she called in? Did you break up with her? Oh, no, no. It's helped the relationship a lot. <laughs> yeah. I know you don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, all right, let's 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 take one call for Gilbert and then start uh, the news. That's, that's only fair. Yes, Liz, you're on the air. Hi, Howard. Yes. Hi, Gilbert. Oh. Hello. You suck. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, well, she's right. What? 
She's right. Oh, yeah, that's I no, have, Gilbert. You know, Gilbert. You don't have any other comedy spots except for one. No, Gilbert. You, you looked very hurt when the woman said. Yes. I saw the look yes. of pain in your face. Because you, you, my eyes are watering. You're just four-year-old woman. And women are not attracted to him because he's on the Hollywood Square. No, Gilbert does get women, and I hate to break your, uh, burst your bubble, but he does. That boy. He gets a lot of women. I mean, aside from his on-air persona, this guy, women want him because he's wealthy. He doesn't spend okay, any money. For money, yeah, put a bag over his head and he's good for the night. But, <laughs> but uh, look, he, he and obviously he must be a great lover. These women yes. do fall in love with him. And the last time I was on the show, that that one girl thought I had a gigantic penis. Right. Yeah. <laughs> then she thought wrong. <laughs> well, have you slept with Gilbert? No, don't even have plans to. You but... don't even know anything about it. <laughs> How do you know he's not the world's greatest lover? <laughs> no, a lot of the comedians comedian. are very sensitive. <laughs> I, I know, I've experienced myself. <laughs> You're never going to get married, are you? Are you ever going to get married? Oh, yeah, I really think of settling down. Having kids. And <laughs> having kids. I think that's the most important thing. No, you know that you're going to be alone the rest of your yes. life, right? And yes. you have no problem with that. No. no. <laughs> I have a scenario. <laughs> Suppose Gilbert actually, now he's got this gig on Hollywood Squares. Right. And then some producer suddenly sees something, and they put Gilbert in one of these TV sitcoms. He'll screw it up. And he oh, becomes, of course. No, no, there's no screw-ups this time. He becomes right. a major, angry, mean, old star. Right. Like, <laughs> like call in. Yes. <laughs> Miss Triple Kites. And then... Kill them all. You know, he's like very well. Round them up and kill them. Those stinking Jews. He's They're all parasites. He's got to keep himself apart from everybody. So finally he has to get some beautiful, stunning woman to come live with him and marry him. And she wants to have children. No, I don't think it'll happen. Gilbert has a family. No, Gilbert, Gilbert never, is a bachelor. Never will happen. Right. All right, let's uh, let's forget about Gilbert for a minute and get <laughs> ourselves this Gilbert's sad life. Let's <laughs> Doomed to be alone the rest of his life. <laughs> now you are very you were very burdened as a young child, and yes. I know that this is a nice lifestyle for you to be free to be alone. of responsibility. Yes. <laughs> and do, do you seriously? It's summertime now. I see you do have a little color in your face. Yes. Like Memorial Day weekend, what do you do? Did you go out somewhere? Did you go to Long Island no. and the beach? Stay no. On the roof. Didn't do anything. Did you stay in Manhattan? Yeah. And what do you do? You just sit in your apartment? Pretty much. Is that true? Sometimes I go outside. Where do you go? Do, yeah. you, do you eat a restaurant? Do you go or? to restaurants? No. No. You yeah. watch the beach on TV. You still order? Yeah. <laughs> you watch the beach on TV? <laughs> <laughs> he goes to the MTV dance party. Then I splash water on myself. But what do you do? Did you, did you have friends? that you Did you go to the shore or anything? No, I Nothing. didn't. Didn't go to the shore. Didn't Are do you a with thing. your girlfriend? Yeah. yeah. Come over. Didn't no. do anything. You just hung out? Yeah. Had sex. Yeah, yeah. Right. He comes over Just and hang. hangs out with you. She yeah. used to be in your apartment with yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How great is that? Uh, what are you... these conversations like? What do we do tonight, Gilbert? Yeah. Do you drink at all? You just come over here. Oh, no. No, not no. for the whole weekend? Can you imagine yeah. how pathetic I'd be if I drank? Yeah. Do you smoke pot? Do you ever do weed? No, 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 not no for weed. years. No. no. Oh, I, you I, used I, to do pot? I Years ago, when I was hmm. like a teenager. Right. That was a lot of years ago. Yeah, or like also <laughs> years ago too. Right. Yeah, you did smoke some weed. Yeah, and then I I start getting incredibly happy, wonder why I was happy, right. and then get all depressed. Well, it sounds perfectly normal. You know, you sound like uh, uh, Larry from the Three Stooges. Maybe he had the same problem. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's. Mo, uh... I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Mo, I'm seeing things again. <laughs> I think I got things crawling on me. Ecstasy <laughs> would be good. For it's Carly's hand on your ass. Yeah. What? Do you think ecstasy would be good for Gilbert? No, yeah. I don't think anything's good for Gilbert. Good. I don't, Love I don't people drug. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing's good for Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert's unhappy. That's all right. So am I. I think I think he beats you in the in the unhappiness. Yeah, I think I actually have a lot more happiness yeah. than Gilbert. Yeah. Laugh riot. Right. I'm a party animal. <laughs> Let's do some news, Robin. I know All Gilbert's right. anxious to understand what's going on. Well, Gilbert. You, you talk a new thing. You really like my views. And I get a big boner. Whatever you do, Oh, you're good. Yes, I am. Wow. This is the song Ringo turned down. Do you ever go to concerts? Do you yeah. like any kind of music that's going on today? Uh, not really. No. no. Nothing. No. No. You ever listen? Have She's hot, right? Yeah. She's 17. Yeah. You would go out with her. Yeah. yeah. A anyone anyone who plays that schoolgirl thing is fine with me. Right. <laughs> music lover. 
<laughs> have hysteria. I mean, does he listen to music or is it all TV? Stuff? He's a big Def Leppard fan. I see. Uh, <laughs> Although, uh, just just recently, as far as those masturbation stories that came back to me. Yeah. Um, years ago, I used to. Yeah, you know, I always used to stay up late to watch horror films. Right. And uh, because sorry. you can actually quote. He loves yes. horror. If I asked you right now to do the entire Dracula movie for us, you could do it, couldn't you? I am Dracula. I bid you welcome. Listen to them, children of the night. What music they make. A spider spinning his web for an unwary prey. The blood is the life, Mr. Enfield. I never drink wine. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> to die. He used to stay up late. To be really dead must be glorious. <laughs> there are far worse things awaiting man than death. For a man yeah, who has not yet lived movie. even a single <laughs> lifetime. You are a wise man, Van Helsing. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Would you ever consider, if, if I got the financing together to play Dracula on Broadway? <laughs> Would you do it? Could he keep a straight face for the I mean, whole Could you time? do it just like sure, that? Why not? You could. Yeah. You would be willing yeah. to discuss that with yes. us. See, now you are going to make him a big star. I yeah. am. Yeah. He, I would go see that play yeah. every night. Yes. <laughs> you could Hollywood Square. Yeah. No, no, forget Hollywood Square. I'm talking about a, a, with beautiful women, a whole play, a Broadway play built around you as Dracula. Yeah, they did it before. and Do it again. I will use your brain, Wilbur. <laughs> You can even do the Albert and Costello. Yes. Uh, Albert and Costello. Yeah. Albert and Costello. Albert and Costello. <laughs> you say you saw the, can the candle move. <laughs> uh, oh, look at this. Dracula rises from his coffin every night to drink the blood of the living. Now, uh, you believe this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> she never talked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was going somewhere, but I forget where the conversation was going. You gotta help me tonight. I will turn into a wolf when the moon is full. You and a million other guys. <laughs> 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 oh, come on. Don't interrupt. This was jamming for our Broadway show. Yes. 50 hour show. Wait, Bring him in earlier. News. I have no I news. I have no news. Billy. I have nothing. No news. No current events. Billy Barty. No papers. Remember him from The Wizard of Oz, Billy you, Barty. You know, I, I did that voice on a Superman card. Well, Wait, which one? Uh, I I do I did that Miss Mistress Picklick on yeah. Two Superman, so they had me as the leader of his planet. Yes. So they asked me to do the Dracula voice. No kidding. The leader. Well, that's good news. Yes. Yeah. Why don't you keep that story to yourself? Yeah, okay. Right, okay. Billy Barty. Oh, so I was staying up late. Oh, I used to stay up late no. and watch horror films. Yes. So I caught the end of one news show that had some girl riding a killer whale. Right. And the killer whale attacked her, and when they pulled her out of the water. She didn't have her bathing suit on. <laughs> That's cool. I, I remember I missed the whole beginning of uh, Phantom of the Opera. Right. Because they had to run back into bed and take care of that. Really? Uh, Is that your first masturbation screen? Out of the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they were they were talking about oh she's like losing blood she could possibly lose her leg and I just saw her ass. Right, and that was enough. Yeah. But they they just recently showed that. Yeah. On when good pets go bad. Yeah, on really? Fox. See that's why women don't. <laughs> So I'm just saying, if Fox is there, send me that clip you know, without the pixelation. It's so weird what men fantasize about because yeah. you see, women don't understand. Women need like when women. I know when women pleasure themselves. Yes. They think about they think about a guy and how he talks and what he talks it's about. Romantic. It's romantic. A guy like I could just look at a woman's ass for three seconds. Oh yeah. And finish off. Even if she's I, almost dead. And yeah, here. I can look at a dead body and, and finish. They, they dragged her out. Her leg was ripped open yeah, and right. bleeding. But you saw but her naked you saw body. her ass. Yeah. That's pornography. Yeah. Uh, and I've been looking for that clip for years now. And when they pixelated it. Really? Time. Oh, that's not right. Oh, it was. So, 
So if Fox is listening, send me that clip. non pixel. I can get that for you. Yeah. Anyway, I'll say it one more time. Billy Barty, the veteran... I want Fox to send me that clip. <laughs> and I want to see the ass. All right, they come on. The let's ass do, let's do a little news. Okay, I'm sorry. It was hurt on Friday. On Billy, Good Pets Go Bad. Billy... <laughs> I... <laughs> Let me talk. That's a larger penis. <laughs> he was uh, hurt in a scooter accident. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like a motorcycle to him. Good morning at California's Garden Grove Strawberry Festival. Wow. The 74-year-old Barty apparently crashed on an outdoor stage, <laughs> sending him head first <laughs> on the concrete stairs. Wow. Uh, the festival director said he fractured his eye socket. <laughs> Will you stop it, Gilbert? <laughs> he drove. He drove off the ping pong table. <laughs> A 74 year old man. <laughs> you know, he's a, the president of the Little People's Association. Oh. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. Hey, get out of my work. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we want to welcome you to the life. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right. So, uh, let's uh, hope he gets back. <laughs> What is it, Camille? Gilbert's the funniest guest you have. I crack up for the minute he gets there, the minute he leaves. Oh, he's... he's the second funny. Don't, uh, don't encourage him. Yeah. Oh, I love him. Uh, Anybody that doesn't like him, there's something wrong with him. He's so funny. Of course he's funny. I wouldn't have him on if he wasn't funny. The Dracula bit is the one that gets me no matter every time. Yeah, Dracula's the best. Oh, God. That's, uh, I'm telling you, I'm putting him on Broadway. I'm not kidding about it. I, I want to talk to you about that. I uh, love him. He has the greatest sense of humor. Thank you. You know what's great about Gilbert when you do business with him? What? You don't have to negotiate with his agent because he won't pay an agent. Yeah. <laughs> you take advantage of him. Uh, well, does he do his own negotiation or does sure. he say yes yeah. to whatever you offer? Yeah, whatever. Free anything. He'll take so, it. The worst is naming a price and they go, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. You want me to work? Yeah. Okay. You want Isn't me to be a parrot? Yeah. When they take your first offer? I'll do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Billy Barty's injured. That's a sad story. Yeah, that right? really is sad. Yeah. You know, all, all kidding aside. You know, there's uh, a... <laughs> very sad. They already tested the reading skills of uh, <laughs> New York fourth graders, and of course, practically everybody failed. And now they have to take a math test. Uh-oh. That could be trouble. So this is, I guess, eighth graders are taking the math test. Here's an eighth grade question. All right, go ahead. A construction worker normally mixes one gallon of cement powder to two gallons of water. One gallon of cement what? <laughs> one gallon of cement powder to two gallons of water. I already am confused. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. For a two by four foot sidewalk square. Mm. Mm. Today, okay, I'm running it. I now. love it. it's even politically correct. Today, she needs to triple oh, the geez. recipe in order to. Do her job yeah. for the new walkway. What is the total square footage she will be able to cover with the tripled cement wow. mixture? That's oh, that's crazy. Easy. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't know. Oh. I don't know that. Oh, Wait, what's the cement friend. mixer? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this girl works with a cement mixer ball. I don't have it. I'm sure Jackie does. He's a mathematician. What's the answer, Jackie? Jackie? I got lost listening to Gilbert, but I think 24, but I'm not sure. 24? No, I wouldn't was... it be 12? Well, do you know why you ask? <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to Gilbert. We're not cement mixers in here. Okay, here's the fourth grade. We make people laugh for a living. <laughs> Kathy receives $10 every month for her allowance. Well, what does she do for the $10? <laughs> she <laughs> saved That's half. me about Steven Spielberg's black son, and yeah. then I can make you laugh. <laughs> she has saved half Wait, her start allowance. again. I want to do this. Go ahead. She gets... $10 every month for allowance. Some girl gets $10 every month. She has saved yeah. half of her allowance for the past 12 months. Go ahead. How much money has she saved? $60. You're right. Oh. <laughs> you I'm amazed. Yourself. I stopped listening. <laughs> I know. I zone out. Yeah. I hear the first word. You didn't do well on these. No, tests, no. Right? Did you see how quickly I computed that? <laughs> oh, I am. Wow. Uh, uh, Liberace, will you ever get married? Not when I get so much clothing. <laughs> I might marry one of those 
big fat oh, color no. chambermaid. <laughs> One of those old fat spooks that cleans my room. Are you saying Liberace was a, was a, he was a he was he into uh, being anti-black people? I wish my brother George was here. That's outrageous. <laughs> No, there was no rumor of Liberace ever being uh, against black people no. or Jews. This is no, your but you're mixing, you're mixing <laughs> yeah, Paul Lind. <laughs> you don't care. Oh, I forget. All right, Howard. You well, they weren't the gay. Past. They were eccentric. All right. Okay. You have in the past uh, <laughs> suffered from OCD, obsessive compulsive. I was disorder. a mental patient. That's correct. I, I played uh, n uh, not the dog like that. You played and, a and, dog yeah, like Dr. that. Dr. Doolittle. That's, oh. that's funny. I was the, uh, uh, These are people yeah. who are mentally ill. Yeah, obsessive compulsive. Well, they've dog. just done a 40-year investigation. Throw the ball. Throw the ball. That was me. <laughs> and what did they say, Robin? 40-year investigation <laughs> on the uh, natural course of this disorder on a group of individuals who, for the most part, received no formal treatment. Okay. A large majority of them exhibited substantial improvement, often within a decade of receiving a diagnosis. I don't get that. This they is more just, confusing than the math. No. <laughs> they just improved on their own without getting any Of treatment. course. In fact, uh, they, you know, did very well and went on with their lives. However, only one in five individuals achieved full recovery. That would be me. One in three continued to grapple with symptoms that interfered with their daily activities, and about one in four retained milder signs of the disorder. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it's a, it's it's once you're once you get on in life and you get a little more secure, then you then the thing leaves you. I don't know. Yep. A total of 144 people all diagnosed with OCD at a psychiatric hospital between 1947 and 1953 participated in the study. But they say that most people eventually relapse. Problem was Dracula an anti-Semite or a racist? I don't know. I, never I hate those no good Jews. Oh, dear. I pull of them out. <laughs> He's going to wipe out the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you, crazy? you tell telling me Dracula's going to wipe the Jews out. <laughs> <laughs> They're bloodsuckers like me. <laughs> Bad news for the workers at the county jail in Nassau County. A federal judge ruled yesterday that Nassau blanket policy of strip searching everyone. Is this like doing the news in a mental hospital? <laughs> Uh, People uh, laughing. The, strips, uh, the blanket strip searching policy <laughs> for everyone arrested in Nassau County has been struck down. <laughs> you can't automatically strip search anyone anymore. Oh, then uh, what fun are those jobs? They have been performing such strip searches on sort of a, strip <laughs> searches on the every person purpose. sent to the jail, particularly <laughs> those arrested purpose. on a misdemeanor or a minor charge like a traffic violation. So oh. you run a red light <laughs> in Nassau County, and the next thing you know, you're bent over, and somebody's got a flashlight behind you. Oh, sounds good. And those who cannot be reasonably suspected of carrying a concealed weapon or drug. So they were just strip-searching everybody. Uh -huh. On any given day, 10 to 20 percent of inmates are in jail for misdemeanors or lesser charges. I and have a weapon in my anus. <laughs> I'm going to have to find it. I hope you're not a Jew. <laughs> Jews need not apply. <laughs> so no more automatic strip searches out there. Dracula, have you ever sucked the blood of the Jews? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no good hook nose blood shocker. <laughs> Franco, you're on the air. Hey, uh, I'd like to have Spielberg's son speak with that. Uh, Dracula. You want Steven Spielberg and his son to talk to Count Dracula? Yeah, I have another question for you. Um, yes, yeah, son, I'd like to introduce you to somebody very famous. Who is it, Daddy? <laughs> it's it's Dracula. Who is this colored son of yours, Stephen? <laughs> you see, Dracula, I decided with my wife, Kate Campsaw, that we as liberals should take in all races of children. Stop spitting on me, Stephen. <laughs> You liberal, stinking Jew. <laughs> Daddy, what kind of man is that? Aren't you going to be a man and fight Dracula? Son, we don't fight. That's not the answer. You can reason with Dracula. You miserable Jew liberals, adopting your black babies. <laughs> your little tar babies. 
<laughs> I'm not going to listen to this. You can't talk to my son like this. Feed your little Negro baby to that shark in jaws. <laughs> Even he will eat that Negro baby. So you don't fight black people? Stop adopting those colored people. <laughs> listen, listen. The you're only spooks <laughs> I want are in my castle. Daddy, you're, 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 listen, my son, I'm very upset. <laughs> Daddy, if he insult you, I'll run his foreign ass over with my Rolls Royce that you gave me on my 13th birthday. Son, I don't want you using violence. Your mother Kate Capshaw and I taught you not to attack Dracula with your fists, but to use your brain. Well, what is his name? Rochester. <laughs> That's right, Rochester Spielberg. <laughs> and he's a Jew. Don't bring your little Sambos around. <laughs> All right, uh, Jerry Springer yes. is considering a pay-per-view special. <laughs> no, what they're doing is they're running his his too hot for uh, TV video on, on paper. That's right. So that now they're saying that's a test to see if this is the way he should go. This way he can show uh, the outtakes without having to bleep. I don't think people are going or, to. Or uh, pixelate. I want to see that mangled girl with the killer whale's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jerry Springer's got it wrong. Jerry Springer doesn't have that. You know, he had to take all the violence out of his show. Yes, I'm People's sure it'll do that. really well. Yeah, because he's, he's very entertaining on his own. I, I have a feeling that's going to be like, like New Coke. It's like they're purposely... Well, New Coke was a mistake, but I think they're purposely doing this. To bring so back old bring Coke. Back. Right. Yeah. I see. You, I see. you know what? You've never made any <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. In the right. middle of what I was saying, I said, I, this doesn't make any sense. So yeah. anyway, for six ninety nine, you'll be able to uh, tune in on Friday at 10 p.m. Yes. Yes. on uh, Time yes. Warner Home Theater. And it will so be I repeated the following top. day. Son, you must stand up to Dracula. <laughs> yes, Daddy. <laughs> Michael Jackson's son, yeah. Prince. I like having a Jew, Daddy. Very ill. <laughs> Prince uh, Jackson. Yes, he's two years old, and he suffered his third seizure in a year, prompting an emotional plea for prayers. Like I'm sleeping that off. Okay. You don't want to say that. Who oh. said the baby may be dying. I'm just right. ignoring Gilbert. Right. You deal with it. <laughs> He's saying slanderous things. Yeah, I had to, I had to protect Gilbert. His lawyer just called me. The Italian tenor shocked thousands of fans at the opening of a charity concert in Medino, Italy, by revealing that the gloved one had canceled his appearance at the show because he wanted to stay at the bedside of his sick child. Daddy, I'm confused. <laughs> Now, you know I don't get to meet many black people here in Beverly Hills. That's right, son, but I want you to be in touch with your black roots. Yeah. Well, how come uh, is, is Michael Jackson baby white or black? <laughs> son, you've asked a very disturbing question. <laughs> but uh, have you heard the term mulatto? <laughs> Why, well, I have, Daddy. But his parents ain't white. <laughs> so how come he white? And he gets white up by the second. Son, <laughs> I know you're trying to be as black as you can be living amongst white people, but do you have to talk like that? Well, hold that mackerel there. Oh, my God. That is you? to be in a New York hospital with his uh, father, who often dons a surgical mask at his side. See, he's all prepared. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor's probably like, hey, this is one oh. place he doesn't look weird, in a hospital. Suffered a serious seizure early on Saturday due to a high temperature. This is the third such seizure over the last year. It will be funny if Michael Jackson brings the kid into the hospital. Yes. And he's wearing his surgical mask, and they think he's a doctor. Right. And he starts operating on people. <laughs> <laughs> you need a new dose. Is he perfect? Prince was rushed by ambulance to Cedar Sinai Medical Center. His dad riding I'll alongside, have to their skin. while his mother rode in a private car behind the ambulance. A statement released afterwards said the baby was treated for a viral infection, fever, and dehydration. Daddy, I'm so confused. His doctors expect a speedy recovery from this illness at home, under the care of his parents. That was a statement released at that time. Prince was born on February 13th. To Debbie, who had worked as a medical assistant at one of Michael Jackson's doctor's offices. How about he drives the kid to the hospital? I think the mother drives in another car. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He was in the ambulance. She was in a car behind it. <laughs> I love you, Prince. <laughs> well, it sounds very serious, actually. Yeah, it does. I don't know what's going on. But at one point, I heard a story that the baby was paralyzed from the oh, seizure. I don't know. 
Daddy, I confuse. <laughs> what is it, son? You're the son of Steven Spielberg, and I can solve any problem. I love you so much. <laughs> well, I'm black, but I'm a Jew. <laughs> so what am I supposed to say? Yo, 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 how the stock market? <laughs> son, <laughs> son, you're confused. You live in two worlds. But I'm telling you, us Spielberg stick together. Your father's behind you 100%. I'm supportive. I'm in the I'm, moment. I'm a black Jew. I feel like beating myself up. <laughs> <laughs> son... Please. And keep your hands off mother. <laughs> American Airlines passengers are describing a scene of terror this morning. One says he remembers lots of flames as a plane skidded off the end of a runway and caught fire last night in Little Rock, Arkansas. There were 139 passengers on board, and American has confirmed some fatalities. There are also dozens of injuries. Another passenger says the jet hit a huge pole, and it split the plane in half. That's when there was a burst of flames that started at the front of the plane and spread to the back. He says the smoke was thick and people were screaming, God, please save us. You should love watermelon and filter fish. <laughs> they are now saying that... Uh, Just give me your Jew money and shut up. <laughs> At Son, least... you're a disgrace. Just hand me your hurt. cake money. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to hear nothing further from you. Daddy. And some 17 people have not been accounted for. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good story for you to interrupt, Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> More racist humor during your... Oh, dear. What if Dracula was black, right? <laughs> Hello, Hello there. Hello there. Listen to the children of the night. Hello there. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> I be with that. <laughs> I am down with that. Chillings of the night. Don't, uh, let me, don't uh, be in me. <laughs> let me take a break. Uh, the comedy musings of Gilbert Gottfried will be back with us after the commercials. Robin will struggle through the news. Uh, Gilbert will, will be... Wrestle. Yeah, she will wrestle with Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried tomorrow night at Caroline's Comedy Club. For tickets called 212-757. 4100. This is. This is. Is this what you wanted? The Howard Stern Show. Rock Radio. K Rock Radio. K Rock. You're listening to a man whose ratings are still not as big as his nose. Howard Stern. Is it Thursday yet, Robin? It's gotta be. Gilbert Gottfried's here. Did you know that he's appearing at Caroline's Comedy Club? And you can call. Oh, yeah. That much time must have passed. So Gilbert left during the commercials, did his act at Caroline, and now he's back. The ticket's called 212 757 4100. Gilbert and I were talking during the commercials, but I don't remember about what. It was really boring. Robin, what's in the news? Hillary Clinton will be in town again today. It's the 10th uh, yes. trip she's taken to New York. This year, and they say that she's telling insiders that she is actually going to make a run for the Senate. However, she still has not made it official, and her spokespeople are saying, while she has not made an announcement, there is no guarantee that it's going to happen. I wonder if Gilbert will support her. Yes. Yes, yes he's going to be a major campaign things. fundraiser, I'm sure. Do you vote in the election series? I'm being serious. Do you vote? No. You don't? No. Well, you know why? <laughs> What? I really have strong feelings <laughs> about, against the way this country is being run. No, you're just afraid to go to the polls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so apathetic. I can't make out the little signs. Yet. Yesterday, the president announced that he was going to start a probe. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, I want a probe. <laughs> Hollywood. Yeah, give Ireland. me a probe. Uh, angering some of his show business friends, mm -hmm. the president said... By their 18th birthday, American kids are fed a dependable daily dose of violence. 40,000 play mur uh, murders and 200,000 graphic acts of violence. You'll but that's quiet. not the point. <laughs> what about the sex acts that he performs? <laughs> How would that affect what, what our kids? What about what they have to right, listen yeah. to about him? That's I, true. I did not probe that woman. <laughs> he has asked the uh, Federal Trade Commission and the Justice Department to study... The extent to which violent movies, video games, and music are marketed to kids, number one. I saw 45,000 acts of fellatio as a child. That's why I went wrong. Number one, please. Mostly with fat broads. <laughs> I'm asking the Department of Justice yeah. and the Federal Trade Commission to study the extent to which the video game, music, and movie yeah. markets 
do actually market violence. Yeah, and then maybe we could have censorship. Oh, yes, they're actually grabbing kids off the street and throwing them into those theater seats. The parents have nothing to do with it. And sending them off to those video arcades. I'll fix everything. <laughs> Why do you think I was with that fat chick? 45,000 acts of fellatio as a child. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Lowenstein is the head of a trade group, Interactive Gi Digital Software Association. No good show. It's <laughs> stinking Lowenstein. Paul, Paul Lynn, please. Uh, <laughs> Money grabbing Joe. He said controls on what kids do what? should come from the home. Number two. All right. He's right. It's parents' responsibility, not the responsibility of government, not the responsibility of politicians, and not the responsibility of the video game industry to try to determine what games kids play. And Robert Thompson, who is a professor at the Center for the Study of Popular Television at Syracuse University, says trying to curtail all the violence on TV would not make for very good TV viewing. Number if we, in fact, decided that to keep violence from happening, uh, we had to make all oh. television be safe for even the most violent type of person who had all kinds of other problems with them. We would That's how we lost Sal Minio, violent. <laughs> Poland, did you see Schindler's List? Yes. I thought it was the feel-good film of the year. <laughs> it was my favorite comedy. <laughs> hey, Daddy Steven, I like when all of them Jews was being wiped out. I like that uh, Clinton wants to outlaw, like, video games like Prince of Persia, and Colt 45s are okay. You know what I mean? Like, like it's okay to buy a gun. You can't can watch somebody use it. No. But you can buy one. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't want to play that other guy, so don't worry about that. All Take right. your hand off the trigger there. All right, Robin. Don't fire that weapon. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, this will just add to the theories that JFK was killed by more than one person and there was a whole conspiracy behind his death. Yeah, sure. Do yeah. you realize? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Like, like no one knows that. Yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> like the government's been hiding us all this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You, know, it's like, you know, I could come on here and do jokes, but you know what I mean? Well, like, the Kennedy thing's more important than yeah, sure. Right. That President Kennedy was brought back from Dallas to Washington, D.C. in a bronze coffin. That's correct. There's proof right there. <laughs> but he was buried in a mahogany coffin. Ah, uh -huh, so how'd that happen? Now, what happened to the bronze coffin? Yeah, bells are. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you see, the whole point is, you know, they, they brought him in a bronze coffin, right. you know, because this was like the whole idea of, like, you know, the whole committee. <laughs> the committee had to get together, and it was like total line. Now, how come there was well, a... Well, why was it Robin? He's well, going nowhere with this. Why was there a five-minute the delay? The bronze coffin was that they filled it with sand and tossed it out of an airplane off the coast of Maryland in 9,000 feet of water in 1990, uh, 1966. Everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason they think yeah, they sure. did that yeah, right. was because they didn't want it to become, you know, some object of... Um, <laughs> you know, just a sinister object, you know, that people always wanted to oh. because it was, you know, Kennedy's oh. dead coffin. Oh. And There's too many weird things around that. They'd be auctioning it off, you know, like... Uh, but why, could, why did they have to switch coffins in the first place? I guess they... Are you telling me they switched the coffins? coffin for the burial. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying they switched Kennedy's coffin? They switched coffins. <laughs> the family probably wanted a mahogany coffin. Are, they just happened to. Are you saying the CIA switched Kennedy's coffin? <laughs> <laughs> But it seems weird that they would bury it. Now they're saying it was Robert Kennedy's idea. That he didn't want it sitting around for people to... It was the ogle. mafia. <laughs> and the CIA. Oh, dear. Abbott and Costello meet Kennedy's coffin. Uh, of course, the uh, bombing left. of Yugoslavia continues. <laughs> yeah. Funny. And every once in a while, we've made a few mistakes. It was the second gunman. On Tuesday, NATO warplanes mistakenly... You're saying home. there was a gunman in the grassy knoll. <laughs> Tuesday, the... He NATO... opened an umbrella. Uh, they dropped bombs on the Albanian side. <laughs> and we're not supposed to be dropping bombs. How could his head go backwards? <laughs> Innocent people get killed. He was shot in the back of the head. But Jenny Shea... What are you saying? There's a conspiracy? <laughs> but there was more than one... Bullet. <laughs> but Jamie 
say? So what, you say that was the second gunman? Hello, Michael. Well, the casualties of war should not be compared to the victims of slaughter, number nine. What are you saying, Johnson? Number nine, please. Are innocent people going to die in a conflict like this one? The answer is undoubtedly yes. But Milosevic kills and terrorizes civilians, not to by the Dutch, but by the hundreds of thousands. <sighs> and it's a matter of policy for him to do that. <laughs> Oh, dear. It hasn't taken long for the dark side to start getting a hold of episode what? one of The Phantom Menace. Copies of the Star Wars prequel have illegally begun popping up on the Internet and elsewhere. Yeah, my friend had one on Sunday. Yeah? Wanted to give it to me. I said, I don't, I don't want to see that again. I can't you say it. didn't want to see it in a theater? No. We are working with the Department of Justice, the Motion Picture Association of America, and 20th Century Fox to aggressively address the issue. According to uh, people at Lucasfilm, they're very upset that it's hit the Internet. That was the thing they were trying to so closely guard against. Those copies suck anyway. They're never any good. They say that uh, Menace appears to be on the forefront of the piracy online. Can you imagine trying to download The Phantom Menace, <laughs> the entire <laughs> movie? Take all day and your whole computer will... I, I can't download a little ten-second clip. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dracula? Yes. I can download <laughs> the menace. <laughs> he has a very powerful computer. <laughs> as soon as they discover an illegal copy of a film in uh, they cyberspace, they kill them. They, they ask the they rip their eyes shut down from the their location. heads. <laughs> you know, a girl with a pony takes 15 minutes to download. It's a 10 second clip. I have it. I can't imagine the entire fucking. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. I almost cursed. I know. Yeah. I mean, the entire. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. I forgot we were on the air. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't sound like any radio show I ever heard. The internet may be a very hard place to police. We're trying to do their our best, according to authorities, but it's not an easy task. If somebody wants to do something, they are going to... He had a big... <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yes. Cannot pursue that. Right. <laughs> Remember uh, Andrastinodione? Yes, that is a drug. That is the uh, over-the-counter steroid that uh, Mark McGuire was taking last year when he made his unprecedented run at that home run record of Roger Maris. And a what? Androstenedione. Anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've done a study of it now, and they're telling people to stay away from it. Yeah. No. They said nobody gained any muscle mass when they were doing this study, but it did rob the body of good cholesterol, and it may also increase the amount of estrogen. Gilbert's on it. An enlargement of your breast tissue. <laughs> yeah. And increasing your risk of heart attack. Are you on it? Yo, Howard, I, I took, I took yeah. this stuff, and the yeah. only thing I can tell you is that the uh, increase. Stupid. The increase. <laughs> shut up. The increase of Frank Choppers was extreme. What's Frank Choppers? The, you know. Breasts? No, the. Erections. Yeah. Uh. Frank Choppers? Mm. Yeah. Well, maybe you chop yeah. Frank with it. Yeah, yeah. It, how you got them? All, I'll get them all the time. Really? Yeah. Well, you need it. But he can't use them. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I, these know. women are filthy. <laughs> oh. Whores. Whores. Dirty whores. <laughs> Dirty stinking whores. <laughs> Got Frankie Chopper, but I'm not sharing it with you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dirty I'm, whore. I'm, I'm trying to give a little information, and I'm getting ridiculed. Ridiculed. Just like those whores. Nice. Just like those whores. Gilbert gets laid more than KC. You know, go figure that out. It increases this is the level of estrogen in a man's body. But why would I give you the... the... I don't know. And why am I having a period? Good need to find a pancreatic cancer, so they're just saying stay away from I have a clitoris, damn it! <laughs> Anybody got any mind all? Sometimes you're just Gotta go to the gym. Damn. Look at these big hooters! <laughs> <laughs> Carrying water, gotta work out my lats. <laughs> oh. 
will be a peace oh. mission to Belgrade today. Russian and European <laughs> I got cramps. today in Germany have hammered up. <laughs> I gotta get out of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, there will be closing arguments today in the federal trial of four New York City police officers charged in connection with the brutal beating of Abner Luima. Oh, whatever. The main defendant in the case, Officer Justin Volpe, of course, has already pleaded guilty to sodomizing Luima with a broken broom handle. What was going on but did nothing to stop it? He was not required to name that officer, and the jury hasn't been told about his statement. Officer, kiss me. Two other officers are charged with beating Luima. The officer's supervisor is charged with covering up the assault. And the case could Cover be... Up these big breasts! <laughs> tomorrow! Oh, the woman, the mother of the woman who was pushed in front of a New York subway train and killed has filed a $70 million lawsuit. Patricia Webdale is suing seven medical institutions that treated the, schiz uh, the schizophrenic man who was accused of pushing her dog. I'd like to kill a guy and put these breasts on January. his chest. Kendra Ann Webdale was murdered less than three weeks after the man was released from one of the hospitals named in the lawsuit. The suit says officials at the institutions knew the man was not taking his... I like to lie down in the train tracks. And they should not have released him. I've got a vagina, damn it! Oh, <laughs> Who's got a razor? I've got to shave my legs. Oh. <laughs> oh, my lid. My lid look good. <laughs> you know how you always talk about these people who jump off buildings and yes. the damage they do? I hate them because they. I don't mind if somebody kills himself. <laughs> don't jump on me when you do it. Well, a Los Angeles security guard. I'll jump guard. on you. I have a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Los Angeles security guard has finally gone home from the hospital six months after he tried to save a su suicidal woman. A uh, suicidal? Uh, yeah, a suicidal. A Conrad Buchanan broke his neck when he tried mm. to break the woman's six-story fall. I used to have a cannon, now I have a vagina. Oh, come on. The woman died anyway. Buchanan was paralyzed from the shoulders down and spent six months in the hospital. Wow. The 96-year-old man says... He saw someone who needed help and that his first instinct was to try to help her. Right. He's a father of two and will move into a wheelchair accessible apartment. He says now he'll just try to enjoy himself. I'm enjoying myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Governor Pataki says New York is considering getting into a giant multi-state lottery in the year 2000. The Mega Lotto would be held as a special New Year's lottery celebrating the 21st century. I might, I might uh, buy a few those the tickets. The jackpot would reportedly be in the 300 million range. Wow. Oh, <laughs> buy eight more houses. <laughs> Pataki has asked the State Division of Lottery to look into the feasibility of getting New York involved. Oh, uh, my wife and I can retire. So I'm sure everybody will want to do that. We have so much fun. <laughs> Shitty Cam! Uh, let's see what's going on in show business. Sarah Brightman. Whoa. Gilbert wants to date her. <laughs> Former wife of... <laughs> <laughs> Sir Andrew Lloyd Lloyd Webber. Yes. Has, yes. Uh, gone into the room. I am a better body than her. I <laughs> dress like her. I need a dress for the prom. <laughs> Yes. She has gone into recording and she has a new album out called, uh, what is her album called? Titled Andrew Eden. <laughs> it's Eden. And here's a portion of Dust in the Wind, which she recorded for that album. Number 15. The Kansas song? Yeah. Close your mouth. She's not so bad. It's kind of sweet. It's kind of wimpy. If I was making love to a man and putting my KY on my genitals, I'd want to hear this. Liberace, come to me. Come here, I want to put some dust on the wind. 
Now, of course, we're all getting to the stage in our lives when we're wondering how many milestones there are left. Oh. <laughs> right, yeah, obviously. And it's one of them, our demise. Uh, there's a new science of aging. Yeah. And uh, a special yeah. on the new science of aging. My your favorite song. milestone was anal sex. PBS. <laughs> In this cut, the executive Been producer, John Rubin, <laughs> says... Uh, no, <laughs> Look at Jackie. Concept. He thinks he's Gilbert now. I know. He's all geared up. The concept of what is old age <laughs> is changing. Number 16. Yeah, he thinks he's Gilbert over there. <laughs> Doing impressions back there. Children of the backside sex. <laughs> As I spoke to researchers throughout the country, I discovered that uh, they really do feel that coming up soon is the prospect of extending the human lifespan. <laughs> And it's no longer science fiction to talk about living to 150, even longer. It's not a fantasy to... Even Gilbert is finally paying attention. It's just, like, Gilbert, with his miserable life, wants to live to 200. <laughs> He's like, they're here for some clothes. Yeah, give him 10 more minutes. He's saving his money to pay this guy to make him live longer. Everybody does. <laughs> David Gilbert. You think he'd be the last one who cares about living longer. And, uh, death... We can make everyone live longer except for Gilbert Gottfried. Right. <laughs> and death is not a part of biology, according to Mr. Rubin. Death is not necessarily part of the biological deal. There's no rule of biology that says that animals oh, have to fall apart as they get older. No. So the rate that we age is something that evolution or What's natural he selection about? has what shaped he's just the way it's shaped death is not natural. Oh, that's a lie. It's a conspiracy theory. Old He's saying, how do you retard cell growth? Uh-oh. I'd still be alive with the Jews. <laughs> Those Jews retarded my cell growth. <laughs> the whole conspiracy. The Jews killed Kennedy, you know. <laughs> Here's uh, George Lucas. You know, a lot of talk is uh, going on about how much money will Star Wars make. Right. And here's George Lucas to say that uh, the film is not about being a contest to see how much money there is to be made. This is not a contest. This is a serious movie. Yeah, it's a small art. An uh, adversarial <laughs> society we live in where somebody has to be a winner and everybody has to be a loser. And it's like... Uh, yeah, Gilbert. It's, uh, it's <laughs> I made it because I enjoyed making the movies. Nigga, please. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> Jake Lloyd, of course, plays Anakin Skywalker in the film. Right. And he was asked, what story or memory will he be, be telling people about making this film years from now? Hey, when little kids are in a big movie and they think they're going to have a big career, they don't realize that they're going to end this up like, it. yeah, this is it. This is the biggest moment in their life. I hate it when people smoke, right? And uh, Rick McCallum had a thing of cigarettes, and they had this little... 20 years ago, she'll be happy to be playing a parrot in a cartoon. <laughs> And it was practically ice in a can, right? right? And what they would do is they spread the bars, like hold on to them because it got so hot. Oh, who cares? He's boring. Who gives a crap. Yeah. <laughs> I can go home and listen to my own kid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. Catherine Zeta Jones. Suddenly become familiar <laughs> with. <laughs> you probably want to know what was her first big <laughs> break in show business. All right, Catherine Zeta Jones' first big break in show business. Bougie. <laughs> my big break was when I was a chorus girl in 42nd Street. Mm. When I was She's a class broad. I'd like to bang her. 16. Uh, and, um, the lead actress was ill, and the first sentence that he wasn't in. Uh, uh, oh, Catherine, shut her down. The knee, and I got on, and David Merrick was a big broadway. I don't know what she's talking about, Robert. Her first big break. She was a chorus girl. Was in, and I took over two weeks later and played it for two years. Kiss my ass. How about that? <laughs> Like magic. And Tony Goldwyn, an actor, his, uh, in the, I guess he contributed oh. to that. He a Jew, maybe he can no. adapt me. <laughs> that new Tarzan animated feature that's about to come out. Any pirates in that? Uh, on June 18th. <laughs> I guess Phil Collins also uh, does something mm -hmm. for the movie. He made a contribution. Mm -hmm. What did <laughs> Goldwyn think of Phil Collins' yeah. contribution? His contribution is huge to this. Because he's really the, the yeah. narrator. Yeah, he plays a bald rock star. <laughs> um, and, and and more than that, he's mm. the emotional narrator because it's mm. music and Phil's music is. Was so he going to play Tarzan? Uh, it's an animated uh. feature, and mm. Phil is mm. the narrator. Me, Tarzan, you, Green. Mm. Mm. One thing I want to get some of those cartoons. <laughs> Look at me. Look how good I am. <laughs> mm. Me, Tarzan, <laughs> Green, like you. You sound like. Uh, Tonto. Yeah. And Tarzan and Tonto yeah. are the same. Me, like you. <laughs> Me, 
Month woman. <laughs> mm. I always like the uh, natives. You know those early Tarzan movies. You must have watched a lot oh, of them. Oh yeah. The natives, and I read about this, were all like white guys. They put them in blackface. Yeah. And, and took some janitors, some black janitors from the uh, Hollywood lot, and there were big fat <laughs> black guys running through the jungle. <laughs> One of them, I saw a guy smoking a cigar. Oh, half of them were wearing watches. Yeah, they were wearing watches. Watch the uh, very you first Tarzan. There were no skinny people in the jungle. It's wild. Fat people in the jungle. Yeah, well, these guys are on the back lot. <laughs> you know, it's like, where do these guys get obese? And finally this morning... Oh, when movies mm. are made Did out of read? town, they'll have Chinese guys in blackface. Yeah. Like, they're real low-budget films. Mm. Right. Filipino guys in blackface. <laughs> <laughs> If you read uh, page six today, you'll see a little item about Stephanie Seymour. She was a judge at the uh, Miss Universe pageant, and they said she was in an Azadine Alaya dress, and uh, it was so sheer that it was obvious to everyone around that she was wearing no underwear, top or bottom. Oh, my God. CBS oh. blew a fuse because, you know, they have a censorship problem. But Tell me uh, about it. Donald yeah. Trump, they said, smiled and applauded. <laughs> He's the man. And when they... Uh, <laughs> Showed her on the telecast. They focused mostly on her face. Oh, that <laughs> so sucks. We didn't get to see that. So she's some boobies. <laughs> I want to say boobies. <laughs> I wish I didn't have these boobies on my chest, damn it. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Most interesting newscast. Oh, I want to thank my special friend, Gilbert Gottfried, who tomorrow, Gilbert's like, He's so touched. You yes. called me a friend? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Gilbert Gottfried tomorrow night at Caroline's Comedy Club. Friend. Friends. <laughs> you could probably do the whole Frankenstein movie too. Have you, is that one you watched? Yeah. Oh yeah. You do the whole. <laughs> See McCarolines tomorrow night. For tickets, call two one two seven five seven forty one hundred. My guess is there's plenty of tickets. <laughs> oh, Jackie Penn has better send me that without covering her ass. <laughs> yeah. What? The second time you've almost choked me today. Yeah. You hit that just as I was swallowing. I know. <laughs> Jackie uh, Penthouse <laughs> joke page. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Penthouse joke page Martling is three filthy joke CDs. Don't talk about my blog. Are only twelve dollars plus four dollars U.S. shipping. Where do you get that filthy information? Also, I can step by to get one free. Call one eight hundred three two three King. Do you have any of Jackie's albums? Oh, all of them. Do you? He sent yes. them to you. Yes. Did you ever listen to him? Be honest. No, he uses them for posters. Have you? Have you ever listened to them? <laughs> you haven't heard them. No, let's play one on the air. All right. Yeah. Saturday, June 19th, one big show at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix, Arizona. For information and uh, for filthy information yeah. and 3D Joke Man, visit... That was my idea to call it filthy information. <laughs> visit Jokeland.com. I think you'll enjoy it. Let me, let me play a little of his act. My innovation to show business was filthy information. <laughs> <laughs> they were just going to call it information. <laughs> How do you make five pounds of fat look pretty? Put a nipple on the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm laughing. It's the first time. Colt 40 Feinberg will be appearing at the Funny Bone in Pittsburgh tonight through Sunday. Go see him. He's very funny, too. I don't know who's funnier. <laughs> Let's have a contest. And you can see Stuttering John's band at Harbor Lights in Philly this Friday yeah, night. Yeah, they're really fun. Yeah, that'll be at... Uh, oh, <laughs> he'll be at Cobblestones in York, Pennsylvania this Saturday night. Oh, okay. I think I have to go to bed. The Jerky Boys, thank you for coming in. Kamal and uh, Johnny. The new CD, Stop Staring at Me, available in stores now at jerkyboys.com. Also, they uh, have a whole website set up just for you. The jerkyboys.com. Thank you, Gilbert. Oh, thank you. Dracula, it's time for the show to end. Yes. It will be glorious. <laughs> <laughs> to have this show end would be glorious. <laughs> Let me tell you... Um, Thank you. There, yes. the, the Diamond Exchange. One last thing. There isn't a better time of year to get engaged. Really, love is in the air. Gilbert, you should get engaged. Yeah. Okay. You have a girlfriend, right? Yeah. Time to buy her a ring. How can I have a girlfriend with these large bricks? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I am not doctor. Getting engaged is a very beautiful thing. When you find that special lady yes, yes. and you want to commit to her, and for the rest of your life, be there in yes, that yes. room with her <laughs> every day, oh, the same a. person, a. In conversation. Don't you want to know where she's going to be for the rest of her yeah. life? Don't you want to spend time talking about your relationship, <laughs> how to improve it? <laughs> 
That would be glorious. You wish you had that. And then, every day, you know, when you earn some money, you can share it with her. <laughs> or she'll need things. <laughs> there isn't a better time of year to... It's equal. You make it. She spends it. Yeah. That sounds pretty reasonable. No wonder the courts always give away 50% of your money. You went out and worked, and she stayed home. <laughs> so it's time to get engaged, Gilbert. Come home to the same face, same body, same voice every day. Year after year. <laughs> decade after decade. How are you describing? Gilbert's married. <laughs> Talk him out of. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he should get married. That's right. Anyway, no. Actually, you know, getting engaged is a special time. And there's only one place to go, the Diamond Exchange, on Route 17 North in Paramus, New Jersey. Gilbert, write this down. <laughs> For over the past 12 years, have you ever given a girl jewelry? Oh, yes. <laughs> the Diamond Exchange has been the tri-state area's premier source for diamonds and fine jewelry. I bet you your girlfriend would love to get a ring. <laughs> Howard, can you go out and pick me up some jewelry for yeah. my girlfriend? I don't know how to get there. Yes, All of... Do you need anything? I need yes. a ring. Yes. <laughs> All of the jewelry at the Diamond Exchange is, is designed and handmade on the premises. Their showcases are packed with the very latest in jewelry design. Beautiful stuff of one of a kind. Everything from contemporary to classic to platinum, the Diamond Exchange staff will help you choose from an exciting collection of loose diamonds and the most beautiful, unique, and custom-designed engagement mountings that you will ever see. Call the Diamond Exchange at 1-800. They were like, wow, he's, he's really reading this good. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's lost. He'd be reading that good. 1-800-550-0633. <laughs> Well, um, this is a serious commercial, the Diamond Exchange. Talking about marriage. Everybody sobered up. 1-800-550-0633. The Diamond Exchange, Route 17 North and Paramus, New Jersey. Go see for yourself why their customers return again and again and again.